part of that, and I, I wanted to make sure, and I wanted to make sure that I was as bipartisan as possible uh, this evening, and so I, you know, I, I did show up with my Raytown South jacket that Butt Dog gave me a couple of years ago when I talked to the basketball team, but I tried to find something as blue as possible uh, for the for the Raytown Blue Jays, and, and this is a dark blue. It's maybe not as light blue as Maddox. Doug, stand up back there. <laughs> Doug's got on some Raytown Blue Jay colors back there. So, But uh, tonight is not about the Blue Jays, and it's not about the Cardinals. It's about community, and it's about youth sports and what youth sports can do for a community. And I know I speak for a lot of people out in the audience tonight that youth sports, when we were growing up, in Raytown, Missouri, was a huge part of our lives for the kids that were involved in it, for the families that were involved in it, for the community here. It was a strong cord that went through the community of Raytown. And uh, I know that so many of us, we were really defined by new sports. We learned so many lessons about competing, uh, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, and all that, and you, you realize that later on in life, uh, things don't always go the way you planned, etc. But youth sports is tremendously important to any community, and it certainly was, and there's, there's people here this evening that uh, played such a huge role in it. Al Maddox uh, was my coach frequently in youth sports, and, and uh, just all the the parents and everybody else. And before we get too far into this, uh, I want to salute all the moms because back in our day, when new sports was thriving in this community, moms played a huge part in that and getting our butts to practice and the games and everything uh, after school. And so I'd like all the moms of the kids of our age to stand up. Uh, Moms, I know there's a few of you around here. Thank you very much. We appreciate so much what you did for us. Now, times have changed in Raytown, Missouri. We know that. But one thing has not changed, and that is the value that youth sports brings to a community. We know that. And so tonight, we're here to allow Dr. Markley to share his vision for the youth sports initiative here in Raytown. And it's gonna take a team effort because the dynamics in this community are different than they were 40 years ago when we were all a part of youth sports then. So the dynamics are different, but uh, we just believe that we can get this done, but we need everybody's help here. We need to be one heartbeat together on this. And uh, I do a lot of speaking about motivation and, and talk a lot about leadership and teamwork and overcoming adversity. And this was a couple of years ago out in Denver. I was talking to a football team that had been struggling. And so the head football coach called me and asked me to come in and talk to his team. But he invited all the parents. He invited all the staff. And so everybody involved with this football team was present when I walked into this room. And so there was probably 120 people and everybody in the room had on a black shirt, a black t-shirt. And across the front of that black t-shirt, it said Stekos, S-T-E-K-O-S. -E and then on the back of those t-shirts, it said, stand in the gap. And I asked the coach, I said, coach, you know, I'm just a simple dude from Missouri. I didn't know what Stekos meant. You know, I said, what does Stekos mean? And he told me the story that it's a Greek word, and back in the days when people, in the ancient times, when communities were behind walled fortresses, when the enemy would try to punch a hole in the wall and attack the community, there were these warriors called the Stakos warriors that had to stand in the gap. They were like the modern day Navy SEALs that man when trouble was on the horizon, they stood the gap and stopped the attackers from getting inside. So stakos means stand in the gap. 
And that's exactly what we've got to do as we try to kick off this youth sports initiative. We need to rally this community and we all have got to stand in the gap. All those in favor of standing in the gap, say aye. Aye. All right, so we got to stand in the gap. We got to be one heartbeat. We got to be united behind this effort because we know the value that youth sports brings to a community. And uh, I got to know Dr. Markley back in October at the Hall of Fame weekend. And we've stayed in touch since, and he began to share his vision for this youth sports initiative. And I said, I'm all in, and whatever I can do to help you. And um, you all might remember the name Bill McCartney, head coach of the University of Colorado. He just was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Coach Mack and I are good buddies, and, and uh, he always likes to talk about, he likes to surround himself with foxhole kind of people. That when the going gets tough, you don't have to worry about what somebody else is doing because you know you're all charging out of the foxhole, united, one heartbeat, trying to get it done. And that's the kind of guy Dr. Markley is. And uh, I'm a big fan of his. From the minute I've met him, he's a foxhole kind of guy that is determined to reignite youth sports in this community of Raytown. So ladies and gentlemen, to share his vision of the youth sports initiative in Raytown, I introduce the superintendent of the Raytown schools, Dr. Alan Markley. Thank you, Mark, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you all of you that have come tonight. Uh, we've been talking about this for a few months now and, and let me just start by one of the reasons I'm standing up here about youth sports is youth sports is also what made me. Now, it's not in this community, uh, in a community like this, though. And youth sports defined my character. It paid, I would say, it eventually paid for my uh, uh, collegiate career. Okay, and that's not going to happen for everyone, but probably what it did for me in character and building responsibility, maybe it made me a, a superintendent someday. Uh, it, it, what it did for me. And, and the other reason is uh, what I have in this game is I have three sons. One's two and a half, one's almost nine, and one is ten. And to me, uh, what we can do for not only my sons, but other folks' sons in this community and daughters uh, and build the community back up, maybe not to what it was 40 years ago, but maybe something different. And maybe it looks different, but maybe it works the same. So that's why I'm here tonight. But I would be remiss if I did not mention my three people that are in this room that came tonight. They're also a part of this goal and what we do here in the school, uh, in the school district. And that's three of our Board of Education members are here tonight. And I'll ask them to stand as I introduce them. Uh, they're big supporters of me. And that helps me do my job. And they're big supporters of the school district. And I'll start with Mr. Terry Landers right over here. Mr. Jerome Barnes and Mr. Rick Moore. Let's give them a round. And by the way, they must be doing such a good job, they're up for re-election in April and nobody wanted to run against them. So they won in a landslide, we like to say. So, and we're glad of that. But I also mentioned, and you saw the placard maybe coming in, uh, and I'm not asking you to go out and vote yes or no, and since I've said that now, I'm covered with the Ethics Commission of the state of Missouri. But in April, we're gonna do something called refresh and refresh the schools. You know, the average age of our buildings, if you take out uh, New Trails, which is our early childhood special ed building next to Blue Ridge, and Little Blue Elementary, the average age is well over 50 years in this district. Now, people like Joe Herndon, raise your hand if you remember that name, and Bob Adkins, and Mike Watkins, uh, they took care of these buildings, and that's the reason they're 50 years old and still look like they're 10 years old. Well, it would not it would not go down well in history if the superintendent, Alan Markley, didn't do the same. And we have facility needs in this district, and we're gonna run a bond issue, a no tax increase bond issue, in April, on April the 8th, for $22 million. Now, it's gonna be a dirty project. When I say dirty project, there's not a whole lot of bling in it. We're gonna spend $5 million in electrical upgrades across the district. If we want our students to be 21st century learners, we need to give them 21st century skills and the equipment to do so. And frankly, if you've got electrical boxes that still have glass fuses in them, we do, uh, they, 
don't necessarily carry the Wi-Fi that we need across the room since we're going every second grader in the school district has a Chromebook. Next year, every third grader and every second grader will have a Chromebook until eventually all of our elementary students will have their own Chromebook to use while they're at school. So if we want to, we can't ask our students to come to school and power down. It's not like it used to be. They're not opening up the textbooks, okay? I don't know how long, Luke, how long have you been on the Xbox in the last four days? His older brother gets up at 4 a.m. and goes down and gets on the Xbox. That's how kids learn today, okay? So electrical upgrades, plumbing upgrades, security entrance upgrades. But there is one thing on there that we're excited about. We're gonna ask our community members to look at. Stand up if you're a graduate of Raytown South High School. Okay. All right, stay standing. Stay standing. Okay. Don't sit down, Raytown South. Don't sit down. Stand up. Stand up. No, nope, don't sit down yet. I want you to sit down if you ever played a home football game at the South Stadium. Sit down. A home football game at the South Stadium. Varsity home football. Did you ever have a home football game? on Bud Lathrop Drive. Never. You never did. Now sit down. Sit down. That was a trick question. Okay. We're going to ask the voters to approve within that $22 million to building. We already had, when I came here uh, six years ago, and I think it was after my first year, wasn't it? After the first year, I recommended to the board that we put turf on both fields because if you went to Raytown High School you didn't get on Chitwood Field unless you were playing football did you okay and after a couple games in wet weather the field was gone so we went to turf and now it's open to the community at all times and it's been a great investment but we're going to ask the uh, the community to approve building stands for at least 2,000 people with press, press box and with concessions that will serve both the football field and the baseball field uh, for South High. And South High will, if we can pass that issue, will have their first ever home football game. Okay? And that's what we're asking folks to do. Now, if you stand up if you went to Raytown High School, if you graduated Raytown High School, raise your hand if you support that because it'll get South High kids out of your stadium. <laughs> it should work. Okay. We're already getting some votes, right? Okay, excellent. So that's what we're going to try to do. And if you want more information, and let me do some uh, some uh, busy work here. I think Mr. Maddox is passing around a sign-in sheet. If you're interested in knowing more about youth sports, knowing more about the bond issue, being educated, put your name, telephone number, email address. We'll collect those, and we'll start feeding you that information. Uh, follow me on Twitter. At, at Dr. At, at Markley Doctor, right? Danielle had to set it up. Luke actually had to set it up for me. But anyway, um, we will send that information to you so you can be up to date on what we're trying to get done. So, and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on that because I want to talk more about youth sports. Looking back historically, uh, when we first met, there's some folks in here. I know Pat over here on the side. He's hiding back there in the back. He was one that came to the first meeting. Some other folks. Uh, when we were talking about youth sports, um, really the, the straw that broke the camel's back was when the Raytown YMCA closed, okay? And that was a big blow to our community. Now I will say during that time that uh, we were starting to see the sports in the YMCA being moved out to Blue Springs uh, and outside of Raytown. Like when we came here six years ago, uh, Luke and his older brother Seth we're playing bitty basketball up at the YMCA, the Richard Green YMCA, uh, that's located just down the road. And over time, we started seeing those things go away out into other communities. Uh, and then eventually they left. Well, that's in combination with other leagues starting up in Blue Springs, uh, Overland Park, uh, on the Kansas side, up north, north of the river, and really nothing for our kids to do here. And I will tell you, my son, my oldest son, played football in Pop Warner and Independence, and he played football uh, in the Blue Springs Sports Association. And it's not cheap, okay? It's very expensive. So when you combine, combine distance and you combine cost, uh, it really cuts out a lot of 
of families that have an opportunity to get their kids in there that need to be in there. And if you look back in, in the days, you talked 40 years ago, uh, we had Raytown Baseball. And I will tell you, Mike Spilker is sitting over here along with Richard Cusick. And Richard works for the district, and Mike uh, uh, is the president of the Raytown Baseball Association. And these gentlemen are doing a good job of keeping baseball going in Raytown. I've coached in that league. Mike's beat me a few games. I've beat him a few games. We, we're not, we'll talk about that later. Uh, because, and it's funny, you'll enjoy it. I was telling uh, Bob sitting there, he asked Luke, or he told Luke he played baseball for uh, the Cubs and the Phillies, and Luke said we wouldn't hold that against you because when you're, when you're from southwest Missouri, really there's only one team, right, Luke? Who is it? Oh, St. Louis Cardinals, that's right. And, uh, but anyway, uh, they're doing a good job of getting that going, and, and, but they still need our help. Graceway Baptist Church has done a great, they have a great facility uh, up there off of Blue Ridge Cutoff. Uh, Luke plays in the upward basketball program at the First Baptist Church. And I see a lot of kids out there practicing, playing in these games, but I still see a lot of kids that are not. But 40 years ago, you had Raytown baseball, okay? You had a football program, you had soccer, you had all these different things that were there for kids to do, and they're just not there anymore. They're in other communities, and they're very expensive to, for people to participate in. So tonight, I want you to think about what can we do to bring it back to Raytown? What's it look like? And I'm telling you, I don't have the answers for you tonight of what it's gonna look like, okay? But here's some things I thought. Wouldn't it be great if, if it ended up where, where Luke goes to school at Norfleet? We had basketball teams from the kindergarten through the fifth grade, okay? We had one that was recreational, for the grade level and another that was competitive, and they played every elementary school in this in our community. And then we see, and this is selfish on my part because I know the kids that are involved in activities are gonna do better academically, okay? But I also know if, and I don't see them here, but they were here earlier, my two football coaches, my basketball coaches, if they're working with these coaches and telling them this is what you need to work with the kids, my varsity teams are gonna be pretty good uh, by the time they get up there. So yeah, that is a little bit selfish on me, uh, on my part, but Coach Lathrop, I like to win. Okay, I don't like to lose. All right, so uh, those are some of the things. We need, would it look like that? I don't know. But one thing we need to do at the end of the day, we need to have access for kids and we need to make it affordable, okay? Parks and Rec is back here. I think Dave, I saw Dave somewhere right there. Um, we do have some, some programs with them, but uh, one thing that we will do as a district, what, how can we offer, what would we do? We, we don't necessarily want to be a part of a board if that's what it comes to about. But you know, when the YMCA closed and we no longer have a community center in Raytown, well, guess what? I've got 17 of them, okay? And I want to drive around this community on Saturday and Sundays and I want to see kids playing basketball in our gyms. I want to see kids playing football uh, on our grounds, practicing baseball or whatever. Okay, the taxpayers have paid for those things. We need to open them up, and the school district's gonna open them up, and if Raytown kids are participating in them, we're not gonna charge them to use them. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So really tonight, you know, we can go into the history of things and why they've gone by the wayside, but you know, there's more, tonight's more about making more connections. Uh, folks, Mark's done a great job, and I will tell you, he's a much better speaker than I am, but he gets paid to speak. I don't. I get paid to call school off, so, uh, <laughs> which I've been getting pretty good at that lately. But uh, I will tell you, tonight I want you to think about what can I do to stand in the gap, okay? What worked, even though it's been 40 years, what worked then that might work now? What gifts do I have? And it doesn't necessarily have to be, we're not gonna ask you to pass around the hat and, and give money tonight, although we're not opposed to taking money. Uh, ask yourself, what can I bring to the table? How can I make a difference? And the biggest difference you will make, you may never know it, and teachers that, are, that have taught for years, they don't realize this until later in their career, you may make a difference in the life of a child by what you've done, okay? Whether it's because you're assistant, you're helping coaching, uh, you may have given a ride to a kid that's parents are working, but they have a child that wants to play and they're a friend of your, your child and you can get them to games. 
that's how you make the little differences that don't cost much and they add up in the end. So we're going to ask you to think about tonight, do you want to be a part of this? And then how can I be a part of it? And we're going to ask you to come to more meetings. And then we're going to start talking detail and what it looks like and how we can get it started with the Raytown Parks, with the Jackson County Parks that wants to get involved. Uh, and we want you to get out, those of you that still live here or know people that live here, talk to them. Let them know that, hey, get involved. All it's going to cost you is your time. All it's going to cost you is your time. Help these folks build something again in the community that's going to benefit kids. That's what we want you to do. And with that being said, I would answer any questions you might have. Um, anything on the bond issue, anything on uh, youth sports, uh, but anything about the school district as well. So, fire away. I put them to sleep. <laughs> Probably next year. Uh, you know, we talked about in some of our meetings, uh, we've got some basketball opportunities through Raytown Parks uh, has partnered with some folks to use our buildings. First Baptist uh, has a good youth basketball program and, and, um, and those are the only two I think. Uh, but we need to figure out how we can bring all those together, okay? Uh, we have the gym space, all right? And I see a lot of kids up at First Baptist, but I have 3,500 plus elementary students, okay? And they may not all be basketball players, and that's okay, they don't have to be. But they need to participate. They need to learn what it's like to be a teammate and, do, and, and teamwork and responsibility. And that's where our recreational things go. But I'd like to see it grow into to football. I'd like to see it move in more into, into basketball, Raytown baseball, uh, and help grow them. And then we may have things that have nothing to do with sports, activities and recreational activities for kids uh, outside of sports that build character. And that's where we want to go with that. We want to make sure that every child has an opportunity to participate in something. Yes, ma'am. The baseball program that you have established and have tell people that they can start with that. Mike, you want to speak to that? Sign up's last day's Thursday or Saturday. Saturday. Right. Stand up, please. Saturday. Mike Spilber. I just took over this uh, three months ago as far as running it. Um, but yeah, we had our first sign up today. Uh, we're going to have another one tomorrow night. Didn't really cooperate this Saturday, we'll see. Um, but we are trying to, you know, I mean, we, we're split up, you know. We got kids that still do the recreation, which is what we do. We have the competitive side, which most of those teams anymore just do tournaments. Uh, but we're, we're trying to build the recreation side. Uh, that's, that's what, that's when it was founded 50 years ago, that's what it was based on. Um, and that's what we're, trying to keep going through the community so the kids have a place that they can play. Yeah, not every kid wants to go do the 70, 80 games a summer, you know, spend the kind of money it takes for, for the competitive side. So we're trying to provide something, you know, for the kids in the community to do and um, still also give them other things to do in the summer. You know, we're, we're not trying to, to steal their whole summer you know, for, for the family and everything. We try to, to get the league done in time for vacations for family. Still keep it, you know, to where the kids aren't getting burnt out. We're not trying to overlap into other sports and take over that type of stuff. So, but yeah, we do. Our, our last sign ups are this coming Saturday. And we're actually doing them down at, at my facility down the street. Um, so if anybody is in That facility is Players Paradise. Players Paradise. Formerly yes, the Laurel Hills. Uh, oh, yeah. We played key ball out here. We had ball. Well, my boy, we played here since we've been here, and uh, the schedule is great. And Mike hits a pretty good point, and something we probably should mention here. There will come a time when uh, parents will have to decide if they see that uh, special uh, talent. In, a, in their in their child, or they think it's but now all parents think they have it. All right, <laughs> they do. That's just the way it is. Uh, I think it most of the time uh, with my three boys, but uh, 
there's, there'll come a time when they'll have to make that choice and move them to something that's special. I, I'll tell you, we've gotten into a situation, and you know, Bob could probably speak to this, and I can speak to it because uh, when I play catch with my two boys, uh, it doesn't take long for my elbow to start hurting. Uh, but anymore, kids are playing, they're playing baseball, you know, and, and I love baseball. Baseball was good to me, but I never played it nine, 12 months a year. When the fall came, we had two-a-day football practices and we played football. And then when football was over, we moved into basketball. And then when basketball was over, we either went to track or we played baseball. Now we're specializing these kids, and particularly in baseball, if you look at the arm, and we won't get into it, but the arm injuries of younger kids today, because they have thrown so many, uh, you know, thrown so much, that uh, I think we, we kind of do a little overkill on our kids. We don't want to get down that road. We'll let the parents make that choice. We just want to give them the opportunity, a taste of what could be uh, an, an opportunity for them. And frankly, I will tell you what, an opportunity for parents uh, to become involved in team activities, and you'll be surprised, uh, and we found this when we came to Raytown, this was one of the best ways we met people, was getting our kids involved in activities and we started meeting parents. Uh, now when they find out that you're the superintendent, they like to tell you, well, this is what you need to do with the school district. But that's okay. I, I, I get that. That's not my first rodeo. But, uh, you know, we get to meet all different kinds of people and we know their, par know their parents and kids and, and have created some really great relationships with members of the community through our children and through them participating together. So. That's, that's something that I think people, they don't realize that until at that time has passed. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. I'm from the Kansas side, so I hope my questions don't sound stupid, but did the high school athletic directors and coaches reach out to, is there a bond between the, the youth teams and the high school where, say, you wear your jersey to the game, you get it free, you, you know, things that promote between the youth sports and the high school level, does that exist? That's a good question. I would say it probably did at one time, but now that we really don't have the youth programs in here, uh, in Raytown, it does not. Now, coming, I can guarantee you go down to Webb City, uh, and you can bet that when you're born as a boy in Webb City, you are weighed and measured uh, <laughs> twice, and then you're put on a certain Mighty Mike team and yes, the coach knows who you are. It's almost like, it reminds me of if you've ever seen the cartoon or the, uh, the show of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Santa was there at the birth of Rudolph. I think the head coach at Webb City Football is there at the birth of every son. But uh, you know, in, in Bud's time or in some of the other, when Coach Chitwood, uh, yes, and when those programs were there, those coaches are in there. They're opening up the gyms. And that's one thing we've got to do as a school as a school district, I've got to find ways to get my gyms open and get my coaches there. And financially, I think we can do that and open it up. One idea I had, and it's that's nothing in stone, even though I'm being recorded here and really haven't talked it over much with the board yet, but I think it's important that our coaches have free clinics in the summertime for any child in Raytown that wants to come and learn about basketball or learn about football or learn about volleyball. That's another sport we didn't mention. Volleyball is one that we want to expound upon. So, but no, long way, you know, long answer is question, the answer is no, but we need to get there. I mean, if my, I've always thought, you know, Jeff City is, is a perfect example uh, in the heydays of Pete Atkins, you know, and I, I know this because my older brother-in-law, my wife's oldest brother, uh, they were growing up in Jeff City, in third grade in Mighty Minds at Jeff City, he was running the same plays that the Jays were running on Friday night. And then I can tell you from experience in being in state playoff football games with the Jeff City Jays, and we were undefeated, and we played them, and we knew every play they were, want to, they were going to run, but they just seemed to run it better that night. And by the time they get there, you know, that's the connection we need to make, I think, if we want to be successful with Larson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, First defeat they've ever had. At the yeah, time. I can bet you that game they lost, the bus ride home for Coach Atkins was not a good one. Yeah. So, so.
Yes, in the back. Yes, sir. I was going to say, my name is Gerald Davis, and I was the race South, I used to be the board president of Habitat for Manny, Kansas City, Missouri. And put me on the, the committee for the corporate donations, uh, because Habitat has a lot of those connections already. And then we can partnership with Habitat on construction issues as well as getting the corporate donations into the program. That Outstanding. I, this program. I signed the list, uh, so I'll come to use my card personally. My, one of my uh, person that makes me look good, Danielle right here, is going to okay. see you before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I applaud what you guys are doing, my buddies, uh, Limbo and Vitamin. And, uh, it's a great program, and I want to thank you guys for all the work that you guys have done. Limbo, stand up. You're the Lee Summit guy, right? There's going to be, uh, we need to, we, we know there's a need, we've got to identify the revenue source of helping kids because we have a lot, you know, we talked about moms in here, uh, and today we have a lot of single moms raising two, three, sometimes four kids, and she may be working two jobs, and she's doing everything she can just to keep up with the homework at night and keep food on the table, and getting them to ball games, that's not a priority, okay? But she may have three kids that want to pay to play. Okay, and when you're talking about a hundred hundred dollars a person, now the Raytown Parks we negotiated a deal with the uh, with the company that wanted to come in and, and offer the leagues. Uh, we let them use our gyms uh, free of charge if they cut the tuition rate or the fee to play in half, and they did. Uh, but that's still fifty dollars a kid, and that's one hundred and fifty dollars. We got to figure out a way to create some kind of revenue pool that we can, and we'd almost call them scholarships now. Uh, it would be better if we could build this pool through community members like yourself or businesses to get that going uh, and identify, set the parameters for those kids. You know, we have 66% of our students in this district are on free and reduced lunch. That means that they're below the poverty line, okay? Uh, and their students are receiving free and reduced meals uh, in our schools, which is good. We want them to, we want our kids healthy and fed. But uh, a lot of times they don't have that uh, discretional revenue at home to spend on sports. So we need to find a way uh, to help these students, to help these kids. Yes, ma'am. I was a single mom back in the 70s and 80s. What we get is that you, uh, mom, dad, and kids are home, picked up the kids during the week, and uh, moms at work picked them up on the weekend. And what you have to do is have you know, meetings and decide who can do what. And that's a great plan. The, the, what we need to figure out is how to get them to those meetings. Come to those meetings. We want your kids to be a part of the program. What can we do to help? Okay. And that's what we're relying on this group of folks that have been there and done that to help us with ideas to get that done. Okay. Good. Good response. Maybe I didn't hear right. Maybe I coaches to open the campus. I've got 40 years of back <laughs> <laughs> You didn't realize, but that was all put in there in percentage. You never looked at your pay stub anyway. Coach. You weren't doing it for the money. You weren't doing it for the money. I wanted to. I told Dr. Harkins once. Dr. Harkins was. Raper? Yeah. They wouldn't do that. <laughs> but the reason we won, Marcos and everybody else in here that plays, didn't matter if you played from that. See, the rule reads years ago, everybody tell me, well, you can't open that gym. You can't have those kids in there. The football coaches tell me that. <laughs> so I call the state. I said, can I have my gym open this open to anyone that wants to go? But yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. 
So that's what we did. Limbo never played a lick of basketball, but he never missed a time that Jim was on. <laughs> as well as probably every night, uh, Dr. Marte, we opened it. I'd say we had between 50 or 60 kids. Every time we opened the gym, there was that many came. And I guess it's past my comprehension. <laughs> or so, you know, I was wrong, born in the wrong era, probably. If you want to win, and there's nothing wrong with winning, except we've been getting dummy down. But not only that, I wanted every kid that played basketball in here to have a chance to be under some discipline, lead a good life, and have a chance to move on. And that's why I opened it. But I can't imagine any, any, any high school coach, and I don't care where he is. I believe it's just the Web City motto. I've watched them suffers win that state championship, I don't know how many years in a row. <laughs> and you know something's going on there. I mean, I knew something was going on at Jeff City with Pete Atkins when he won 36 on the road century and went to Jeff City and won 70-something. I went and visited Pete Atkins. How you doing? But I can't imagine any coach. Football's doing it with the weights. Why in the world would a basketball coach not have his gym open at least two nights a week in the summer? I, I don't, I can't understand it. And I'm not saying that made Bobby or anyone else in here or Mark, I don't know how much better players have made them. All I know is if there were some older guys there, our five got picked to play in the first game. Win or stay on. And Mark was playing against guys, and so was Bobby. They were 19, 20 years old. I ain't here. But if anyone wants to know why we won, that's why. And we built relationship. And if Bobby came or Mark came and played like dog manure, yeah, we did a little coaching. <laughs> well, I'd say I think I know what you're, what you're saying. I, I think the, your Web City model and your uh, and other models across the state, you said it, and the word is community. The community has an expectation, okay? That's what, that, that's what the Web City community has. That's what this community has. It's not to the degree it used to be, but it can be again. And we've got to set, in, in the school district, we set academic expectations. The school board sets expectations for me to set for the staff to where our kids need to be academically, and we do that, and we're held accountable to it. And, you know, frankly, we need to hold our community accountable to what kind of community you want. Another reason Dr. Martha is why I open it, I think every teacher and every coach, I wanted to get Mark and Bobby and whoever else is here playing on the team an opportunity to be the best. See, I offered one time, just said the kids may be a tough one. The reply I got was, well, why don't the home ec teachers want to do that? I said, I think that's hell by you. <laughs> why not? How, how, I'll ask you this question. You've been in education all the time. How many science teachers say to their kids, I'll get there two nights a week this summer. You come up. Now, I'm not saying there aren't any, but I'm saying there are very many that do that. Math teachers, science, it doesn't matter what area. Give them their time two nights a week from 6 to 10 to make the kids better. Yep. That's my idea. Yeah. I want all of them to, to have a chance to be the best. And I think Little League could do the same thing. Sure. You're still uh, working at something. You're still with, with the better players that are going to be competitive. 
this is what it's like. Yep, I agree. Mr. Wainwright? Yes. Uh, I'm going to thank you for just having a vision. You know, we have kids who live in this neighborhood that go way out on 135th and Roberta to play basketball. They pay $155 a month to play basketball. And, you know, it, it hurts. You know, um, the pocket, the transportation, and, and just the, uh, you know, next thing you know, those kids will be going to school way out, you know, 130 kids somewhere. You know what I mean? So keeping our, our young people here, right here in the Raytown area, it is the best thing that, that can happen. And I, I'm with you 100% with that. Uh, that's why we're here. You know, when I read about it in the Star, I was like, wow, uh, finally somebody's getting it. Because you look at the, the obesity, you look at the health and wellness, you look at our kids, I had to shovel snow. Being 60 years old, shoveling snow because kids don't ask you, do you need your, your um, driveway shovel? You know, because they playing Xbox or whatever. So getting our kids out of the house, doing some things that, that can be productive, and, and just like um, Coach Bud was saying, you know, they going somewhere. If, if we open up the gym, if we open up the field, I, I love um, Coach Hernandez, and I'm, I'm hoping that you guys will support the teams that are out here, not only for here, but if they want to take their team somewhere else to represent right now. So I thank you for your vision. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. I have a situation where there's a coach out in Johnson County who coaches his fifth graders. He's a high school coach, and he's part. He's partly involved with fifth graders, and it's a Blue Valley Northwest, and they just won the state championship, I think, last year. Anyway, and uh, they have the same players been playing together for a long time since the fifth grade. And what he was talking about, I'm involved in this basketball over in Kansas, and what he's talking about is true. The kids go over there to play for 125, 150 dollars a month to go over there and play. They will never play with those kids again. They'll see them later. You know, they'll see them in tournaments. They'll see them other places. But what, what he's trying to do is he's trying to take the fifth graders that play together, stay together, and play together all the way through high school. So when they get to high school, they get to junior varsity or varsity, they've been playing together for seven years. You can't imagine what a team looks like like that. That's been doing it. They've been playing together since the fifth grade, and they've been they've been doing it over there in, John, in Johnson County in Kansas for a long time. I know some some teams over there. They're just neighborhood teams that play with their school district. And what they do over there at Blue Valley Northwest is those kids that are going to go to Blue Valley Northwest, they play on the Wildcat team. Okay, and they stay on that team from the fifth grade all the way through. So when they get to be seniors in high school. The, the coach over there that's been coaching over there, he's been coaching these kids for seven years. And these kids have been playing together for that long. And I always see, I always see the kids, I always see the kids over there from there are some kids come home from Raytown to go over there in Kansas and play. And they open up all the gyms, they travel all over the place, the gyms all, all over the city over there. And these kids have been playing together for a long time. And by the time they get to high school, when Bud gets them, it's so easy. It's so easy because they've been doing it for a long time. And if the coaches are involved in what the kids are doing, just like the coach from Blue Valley Northwest, they have a system set up from the fifth grade right on through. So when they get to seventh grade, they get to eighth grade, they've been doing this for a long time. They've been playing together for a long time. And that's, that's one of the things that we're missing here is because the kids from Raytown are going elsewhere to play. I've had the same thoughts. And they and they and they should my desk or sitting on my chair stand. And we shouldn't be and that should not happen. That should not happen. And I don't know how many gyms we have available, but we need to open up as many as possible. Seventeen of them. We should be we should be using them. We should be using them. Are they never open? Oh, they're open, but we don't, as far as opening up and then just, you know, letting the public come in for kind of what Bud was talking about, no. 
Uh, we've kind of gotten away from that. Why? And there's many reasons we've gotten away from that. Most of them have to do with legal reasons uh, and the way we're kind of handcuffed on what we can and we can't do. But there's, there's things we can do to get around those. We just have to be very tactical and still stay within the limits of the law. What's that? Absolutely. 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 Girls basketball. It's not just about girls basketball. Girl, we got, girl, Connie, we got, we just started middle school wrestling, by the way, in Raytown. And, uh, and it's been very successful. And I'll tell you what, we have girls on the middle school wrestling teams. And some of them are better than the boys. <laughs> so. Yep. Well, Alan, volleyball is another big one. That's right. Our girls cannot afford to pay thousands of dollars to play club volleyball. My yep. daughter's playing that. We're lucky we can afford that. But our girls, most, most of them can't afford to play that. Right. We've got to find a way to get more of our girls to be able to play those kind of things to get the experience. I agree. And, you know, what this gentleman said back here in the back, um, I could go to Norfleet Elementary, swing up over to Little Blue, and then hit Fleet Ridge, and I could go in either the third grade, which Luke is in, or the fourth grade, and I could pick four or five kids from each one, and our and and we could identify them to our Raytown uh, high school basketball coach or football coach, and over a period of time, we could do just exactly what you're talking about. We'd be pretty good. We have kids walking up and down the hallways to these elementary schools that are athletic, but are not involved in those things. We got to get them involved. One more question to this gentleman right here. Yeah. Uh, Dave Hicks and Breakdown Soccer Club. Breakdown Soccer Club has been in Breakdown since 1968. Ten years ago, we had over 2,000 kids in our club. This year, or last fall, they were a little over 802, 803. As far as being affordable, we charge $90, whatever age group, except we do do a soccer zoo, which is for three, four, five, eight year olds, and that is $50. So, I think that's an affordable, I know it's a lot cheaper than most other sports. As far as his discussion, as far as the high school coaches, I believe Misha has a rule about uh, a coach cannot coach kids over the age, like eighth grade, I believe it is. Right. So they, they can coach, but they can offer camps, and clinics, right. and things like that. Right. So but they things, can't coach them. Right. That's, and, that's what he does over there. At the yeah. He's he like a consultant. He does clinics and that kind of stuff. And he has people who run the teams. Sure. He's not involved in the coaching, and somebody else does the coaching. He's not involved. Well, you know what? We've got uh, we we had a pretty good run at Raytown South for the first time uh, in soccer this year, and uh, we've got those kids there. The kids are there. They just you know you say ninety dollars. You know it's, it it may be affordable, but it may not be affordable to some. But that's where our scholarships might help offset some of these things. Appreciate it. Dr. Barkley, thank you very much. And uh, we all know from our experience what can happen when the kids are engaged, the families are engaged, and the community is engaged. And that's what we're trying to do here. And uh, there's an old saying that a cord with three strands is not easily broken. So. With the help of the school district and the help of all the wonderful talent in this room, let's try to get it going here again in, the, in Raytown. Reignite youth sports. And we just appreciate all of you being here. And make sure that you sign the email list here so that we can contact you. And we'll get this thing going. Thank you all for being here. And drive home safe. Appreciate it.